Mr. Ferguson, no doubt. Homes as long as they can, particularly as they age and as they get sick. The demand for home cares was never greater, and the funding was never greater either. But the fact is, weekly we find people who have been assessed as needing home care, there is no care for them. At the end of March, over 5,458 people had been assessed nationally as needing a home care but didn't have one. 90 patients were in acute hospitals awaiting discharge with nobody to look after them. How do you intend to recruit adequate and appropriate care for these people and keep them out of long-term care? and thank you for your continued interest in this particular sector. Um, we've had many conversations. You're quite right. The demand for home support um, has, never, has, has, has never been higher, and its importance as an alternative service to long-stay care has grown considerably over the past number of years. But also, it's a way more uh, cost-effective way on the state um, to support people, um, as against being in acute hospitals or being in nursing homes. Um, in Budget 2021, I secured additional funding of €150 million Euro to progress the development of a reform model of service delivery to underpin the statutory scheme for the financing and regulation of home support services and to provide five million extra hours of home support and again I'm delighted to say that this funding has been maintained into 2022. Last year we delivered 20.9 million hours so up 2.9 million on the previous year which was a huge um, increase and we supported 55,000 people. Currently we're supporting 55,000 people on a daily basis but there are challenges and those figures you referred to um, we had three areas that were particularly problematic. We had CHO4, we CHO5 and we had CHO7. Now this week alone I have met, um, I had meetings with the Chief Officer and the older persons uh, lead in both CHO4 and CHO7 to see what can we do, what can I do more to help them. So one of the things we have done is, as you know, I have put in place a, um, a cross-departmental strategic workforce advisory group. And this group is after meeting with all the key stakeholders. What we're trying to do is to make home care an attractive, viable option as a career choice. That's the first thing. Um, that committee is working really, really well. And there'll be significant recommendations out of this that I will have to bring to um, Minister Donnelly with his support, will bring to Cabinet, and we will be looking for funding um, you know, for next year's estimates because this is a serious piece of work. And the second piece I discussed again with uh, Minister Damien English yesterday in relation to working outside the EU to encourage people to make permits available so that those outside the EU might come into Ireland to provide home care. I welcome very much to the initiatives, Minister, but it doesn't change the fact that uh, home care was provided by the state by the HSE. That has changed now, and I regularly get glossy brochures from uh, big companies who are moving into this marketplace and treating it as a market, rather than as I believe a career it should be, as you say, for people. And my, my point is, I don't see any sign of a national recruitment drive. I see no ads on the television. I, I don't hear it on the radio. I welcome your initiatives in relation to visas from people coming from abroad or outside the EU, but we are not doing enough. And we've got to tackle it, we've got to make a career. It was a career in the health service and it was a respected and an acknowledged and a very important one. You need to recruit into the HSE full-time carers, pay them, give them a career. The people want them, they need them, it keeps them out of inappropriate care, it keeps them out of acute hospitals. 90 at the end of March were in acute hospitals, 90 beds taken up by people who couldn't go home. So I think, Minister, I welcome your initiatives, but we need more action. Uh, thank you, Deputy. And yes, you're quite right in what you say. Um, and I think a national recruitment drive is really important. So, as you know, we've nine CHOs. They all vary. CHO 9, um, North County Dublin, all of their supports are delivered both through uh, voluntary and private, no HSE at all, something that was evolved over many, many years. Their waiting list is the no lowest in the country with 50 people waiting. Yesterday I met with CHO4 Cork Kerry. 75% of their home care is provided through the HSE, 25% through voluntary and privates. And I think it's important to remember the voluntary sector here. I met last week with Northside Community Care in North County Dublin. They delivered 900,000 hours last year 
year, a voluntary organisation, not for profit, doing phenomenal work on the ground. But I do believe what you said in relation to, we are doing a rolling a recruitment campaign in certain CHOs, not in all of them. At the terms and conditions provided by the HSE um, are 16 euro plus mileage, so they are attractive compared to some of the privates. But I do agree with you, and my meeting was focused around that yesterday. I welcome and support you in relation to uh, community care and voluntary organisations. It isn't possible in some communities to do that, particularly as towns become cities and people, you know, they're not as, as neighbourly, they don't know their neighbours as much as they used to, and that community benefit is lost. I'm delighted that it's there. Could you let me have a note on how much is paid to private providers nationally and the number of hours they provide? Because as I see it and as I believe it, is, is that they seem to have uh, a significant, a greater payment for the individual service they provide than the individual worker. But it has to be a career and, and it has to be now. And the other point, Minister, is that, uh, and I know we all agree on this, there's a huge number of people inappropriately in nursing home care. They don't need to be there. They're charged a fortune. In many cases, they're getting excellent care. In many others, they're getting very poor care. But they need that at home. And that is the place to be. And all supports that we can provide there uh, would be very welcome. So I look forward to your, to your national recruitment drive. And I welcome your uh, involvement with Minister English in relation to access from people outside the EU. Last Kincorla. Um, Minister, look, we've, we've dealt before about the particular issue if we're talking about um, home care specific. Um, look, we all welcomed the, the work of the Workforce Advisory Group, and, and it, must, it has to be looking at the issue of visas, tax breaks, here pay rates have to be on the table, um, and obviously the issue of expenses. We know that there are anomalies, you know, CHO by CHO, and it, but we really need a timeline. And then beyond that, I suppose, it's that wider issue of workforce planning to ensure that we have enough people to be able to cover what needs to be done, because we have families that are under significant pressure in the sense that they cannot get people to give the adequate hours for their loved ones so they can stay within their homes. Thanks, Deputy. And we have, we have had many conversations in relation to home care, and I know everybody feels the same. I'm in the unique position, I suppose, as Minister, that I have a budget of £672 million to deliver home care. And every one of those um, packages, apart from what comes in, you know, rolling over 10 or 14 days, um, they are funded, but the, the other ones will be funded very, very quickly. So the issue isn't funding. One issue we do have, Deputy, if I could say, is, um, and I provided money in the estimates last year and again this year, some of the CHOs, depending, um, not all of them, but some of the CHOs um, are working still off a paper basis. They don't have a, an IT system fit for purpose. Now, we piloted um, a, an Irish company that I'm not going to name, but we piloted an Irish company in CHO3, which is the Limerick area into Clare and into parts of Tipperary. And this pilot um, has worked extremely, extremely well. And I have written to uh, Paul Reid um, last week to see can this be rolled out um, across all the nine CHOs, because I know all of the um, chief officers are very supportive of it and trying to work as um, a paper system system in relation to home care in 2022, that's not fit for purpose. And I think it would also be way more effective in relation to waiting lists. I will get that note for you as well. 